Now we're going to review how to use school links throughout your college application process. First, click Log In under the Updating School Links section of your ETHS to College Guide. Here, you can log into School Links by clicking Sign In with Google under Single Sign In. There is no need to manually type your username and password in the area to the right. Once you've clicked Sign In with Google, be sure to log in using your ETHS202.org account and do not use any personal Gmail accounts that may show up. In this tutorial, I will be using a split screen so you can watch me navigate through school links while referencing the school links tracker flowchart. You may notice fewer items on your personal to-do list, and that's okay. This is because the account shown is for demonstration purposes only. Once you're logged in, find the step-by-step -step instructions located in the ETHS to College Hyperdoc. If you click on it, it will bring you to the School Links College Tracker flowchart. Each one of these boxes is clickable, so you can actually see a YouTube video or a document to help you along the way. The very first item on the flowchart prompts you to navigate to the College Application page in School Links. If you click on this, it will take you back to the Student Login page for School Links. Once you're in, you can begin to follow along with these steps. Go to Colleges on the left side panel and click College Applications. If this is your first time logging in, you will have to complete the application setup by entering your home address, indicating if you qualify for an application fee waiver, and signing off on the FERPA release. Please know that the fee waiver and FERPA release within School Links is for non-Common App schools. If you are applying through the Common App, you will also need to complete a fee waiver and FERPA release through the Common App website. The FERPA release authorization is a document needed in order to give you permission to send your official transcripts, letters of recommendation, and other supporting documents to the colleges and universities you will be applying to. Please make sure to read through the pop-up carefully on your own before checking the box next to, I have fully read and understood the FERPA release authorization explanation above. After checking the box, you will be given a choice to waive or not waive your rights to review all letters of recommendation and supporting documents submitted on your behalf to the colleges and universities. District 202 counselors strongly recommend that you waive your right to review all recommendations and supporting documents. There are three reasons for this. Colleges view students who do not waive their right as a red flag because they wonder if you do not trust the people writing your recommendation. Recommenders typically will not write a letter of recommendation for students who do not waive their right to view their recommendations or supporting documents. Finally, even if you chose, I do not waive my right, the only time you'll actually be able to view any letter of recommendation or supporting documents sent on your behalf is if you were to apply to a school, get accepted by the school, attend the school, and they still have the letter on file. Most schools will destroy the letters of recommendation and other supporting documents after a student has been accepted. Again, we strongly recommend that you waive your right to view all recommendations and supporting documents. After you select your option, you then type in your name that will serve as your digital signature. Finally, you will check the box next to the statement that states, I understand that my waiver or no waiver selection above pertains to all colleges to which I apply and that my selections cannot change after submitting this form. After checking this box, you will be able to click the sign waiver button. Now it's time to link your Common App account with your School Links account. This allows us to get information from Common App and also allows us to be able to send your transcripts and letters of recommendation to your applications. Linking the accounts is actually a really simple process. Just click Link Common App Account and it will give you the entire step-by-step -step process of what to do in order to link the accounts. When you click the link, you will be directed to the Common App login page. We encourage you to get that done right away if you have a Common App account created. If you do not have a Common App account created, 
it will actually allow you to create one through those steps as well. Once you've completed that step, the next piece is clicking Track under Submission Tracker. If you've linked a Common App account, you will actually see those schools on your Common App listed under Not Started, and all you need to do is move them from Not Started to In Progress. You can either move the college over by clicking Start Tracking, or you can manually add the school in the In Progress column. For this example, we're going to add a school under In Progress so we can begin to submit requests. Once you add a school, it will have you select an application method and application type. For application method, it shows Marquette accepts the common application or a school-specific application through their university website. Please select the method you are applying. For application type, it asks you to pick the application type according to specific deadlines. For the program name, it's up to you if you would like to put down what program you will be applying to within a particular college or university, but this is completely optional. Once you select your option, you will be sent to that college's specific application. At the top, you can click on Admissions, Application Info, and Financial Aid, which will send you to Marquette's specific web pages. If you scroll down, you will see your application status, method, type, and deadline. This information can help you keep track of your applications. The next step is for you to complete the student checklist. The checklist will ask you if you are applying for financial aid for the school or if FAFSA is required. Note that the student checklists are action items that the student is responsible for taking care of on their own. Items located on the student checklist are not requests. If you click yes, it will create a checklist of the thing you need to complete as the student. If you click no, it will make the item disappear. Teacher evaluations, also known as letters of recommendation for Marquette are optional. The example shows that you can do up to two teacher evaluations. To request one, just click the Request Teacher Evaluation Recommendation letter. Select the teacher you would like to have as your recommender, and they will receive an email. If their name does not appear in the system, you can also add them manually. Finally, your transcript should automatically be requested under the counselor documents. One of the additional documents might be on a school report that will automatically be requested on your behalf. Please contact your counselor if you believe your school requires additional documentation. This flowchart can walk you through everything that you need to request when adding a school to your in-progress list. Once you are done, you can go back and either move another school to the in-progress section or add another school in manually and start right back at the orange box that says Submission Tracker. Just work your way through these final five boxes below it. So this is the process for adding schools and school links. After that, it really comes down to just you working on your applications. Good luck and be sure to reach out to your counselor in College and Career Services to assist you through the process. <laughs>